Praise is Ja, Alien Para. Pick up yourself, truly it's unruly cooly alongside Dan Sinclair. Please subscribe to the channel. This is the Polonjin Great Unity Promotion. London, England, big it up. Mr. Sinclair, unruly cooly, truly. Welcome, 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 people. Yes, I'm Ruly Cooley here with the John Sinclair. Yes, we are here in Kingston. And right now in Judgment Yard with none other than Sizzler. Rastafari. Peace, love. Gracious blessings. So we have had the pleasure of coming to Judgment Yard. And I'm going to do this interview a little bit different from how we normally do it. So we've had the pleasure of this little paradise here and i want all of you to know about it so we're going to talk about what's going on here with the project and of course how the fans and the audience and yourselves can all help to support this amazing project here to support the community and the young youth okay so sisla thank you so much for your time it's a real you pleasure um now I, as I just mentioned, want to focus on what you're doing here right now and what inspired you, where did this idea and thought come from? Well, it's a continuation of the black movement, you know, from Marcus Garvey, Sir Alexander Bedward and from the Black Prince of Manuel, yeah. you know, fulfilling the duty of the Majesty, the Rastafari. Yeah. So this was where I was um, brought up by okay. um, my father's one of the kids is on a cover. Okay. And we go to find lunch and those my family that's so done. So we can support this family and others. Yeah. So, uh, I'm up here. I'm very Is that intimate. your family home there then? Yeah. I'm very intimate with this property and mm -hmm. you know, this is the property of um Frederick Heights, right. through the office of the secretary, Mr. Roman, Mr. Roman in the park with Jarras the Farah. Edward's secretary talks about Jarras the Farah. Um, Dad was secretary to read that, so right. um, and my dad was like quite busy. Okay. Have a child, but we let me um uh, sister Adi, right. sister Ida, okay. sister Kishi, and Papa, sister Ida, and she did that. Mm -hmm. So I'm very intimate with this land, and I think that um, being a person of that status, yep. growing up past the problem that young age mm -hmm. is my need to continue the whole work. Yeah. Not to bring to Africa and bad relationships and this aspect of the most powerful sense. Yeah. So I've yeah. um, decided on altering the property. Okay. So I'm like, the whole world is now like looking at Sisla. You need somewhere where people can like, come and have fun, yeah. enjoy the music, Absolutely. because it's fun, learning this fun. Okay. And I'm always here when you're up it, you learn to. Learn. So I've decided on turning this place into a very beautiful place because I've traveled the world and I've seen a lot of beautiful places mm -hmm. in Africa. Yeah. Here in Nepal, so. Yeah. so I started by um, constructing a couple of the garage and it's a kitchen. Okay. And he said, I'm um, the office up here for my dad, my mom, and my sister. They all oh, you're looking out the whole family. That's me out of that. yeah. So I came down here and I started like an ear big because I wanted to have something that can you know, come that brings money and yeah. and leave that level. So I started out and said, I'm going to do some air and something like that. Uh -huh. So now that I'm using myself, right? So but that's said, the, the building back there. Yeah. So you'll see it. that later. We've, we've filmed around so you'll see exactly which part he's talking about. Okay. So I said the vice of the people is by some shop and the welders said um and the road is called Museum Terrace. I said you're you taking over my stuff, you did you come in at the museum and you call him the road museum terrace and I said, Yeah, let's go. And I started that until the government started putting in light post. Okay. Um, in order to get light around here. Yeah. And I said, All right, because of the um the report on the visa and I myself had decided on getting off the road a bit. There was like a shortage in income, so that's why the so I said, no, something, they need somewhere where they can eat up. So I'm going to do that college of the airport. Nice. Yeah. Stores. So yep. I'm going to do something like that. So I started out with my end up there. Some of the stage rules, I would take my money and just put everything in one bunch and yep. just do it. All that income to the, to the construction of our project. And we have other persons who have big sponsors, you know, mm -hmm. persons in the community, how the community oversees just well wishes and friends, fans. They would do with that um, random time, they would like send money mm -hmm. and they, they would have sent it to the foundation, the Sisley Foundation. Right. And that's why we used to like do stuff yeah. and the uh, charitable level NGO. And, and that's where it's at. So I decided I'm making this space beautiful. And, after doing such, a lot of kids started coming here. Yeah, a lot yeah. of elder persons have done a lot of charity shows. 
and I did a lot of scholarships. So I just continue to do what we do best. That's, that's nice. Trust me, people, it is a mini paradise. It is absolutely beautiful, and it's not even complete yet. There's a lovely little what would you call this? It's like a, it's like it's a really pond. Cool. Yeah, it's like a little pool. A little pool here, and it's spring water, fresh. So when you, I put my feet in there the other day, and honestly, I was so refreshed. Not thinking of none of those troubles of work and all the rest of the hustle and bustle in London. You'll just free your mind dipping my feet in there. So imagine if I dipped the whole of myself in there. It would be a completely different experience. But it's beautifully done. Okay, so you mentioned about the, the visa situation. What, what was going on with that? What was that being revoked? Are you able to travel and stuff and do more stuff? Yeah? I was given a visa about five years. Okay. I was a team for the United States of America. Mm -hmm. I was a team for the United States of America. It's just a process. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's just a process. Yeah, yeah, they have processes. Yeah. Through it and that's yeah. it. When are you coming to the UK? That's what I need oh, to ask. We I want you there. The we want you there, don't we, guys? So you'll have to apply for that as well, wouldn't you? Yeah. Okay. So also, um, so there's a kitchen being built there, as as you mentioned, um, the museum up the back there. I've also encouraged him to make sure it's a B and B because I love to come and stay. Um, and then we've got this lovely pool here and the yard itself. Setting up the way. So we just spontaneously one evening went up into the hills to a place called what was it called? Gordon Gordon Town. Gordon Town. And lo and behold, who was there? Sizzler himself stringing up his boxes. So, I didn't know he had a sound system, yeah. but now I'm sure you guys didn't know either, he does. And we'll get to see that as well yeah, later sure, on, yeah, yes. Right. So, tell us about that. How did that all start with you? Well, boxer now is like always getting at Sizzler, you know, because ever since been a youth, um, the selector, boxer, Ricky Trooper, yep. um, Fire Links, Mataran, yeah. Caveman, um, Rory, yeah. Weepo. You know, Sky Juice, Scorpio, yeah, a whole lot of them. You know, they, they, I don't know. These people just love Sizzler, you know, mm -hmm. and they've been supporting Sizzler ever since to get go in the in the music career. Yeah. So seeing the fact that uh, at this level with these um, accolades and I'm doing so many stuff, yeah. um, boxer was like, Dada, you see the sound system we've been doing it, and the kids in in Montego Bay they took yeah. it up and they got oh, big wow. sound system based yeah. on this. It does this um, the sound system yeah. stuff. I would say we want to do something that to show appreciation to um, selectors and mm -hmm. boxmen and bring up our boxes and I want to do something. Um, so it was this um, 70th anniversary okay. um, concerning doing music, the yep. sound system. So I said, Boxer, you can go ahead. He said, you want the sound. Yeah. I said, Boxer, you want the sound? He goes, your sound. So he put the sound, it's other sound, quality, mm -hmm. nice sound, great selector, yep. K9, Big song, oh. yeah, climax of yeah. big song, the far right, yeah, as well. And you have other song, I'm not remembering any, but they're all great mm -hmm. um, people, yeah. great personalities. Yeah. So we said that we're going to use your song as a wow. host, only to find out boxer and all them guys tried to keep my song. Yeah. I'm like, boxer, I'm very experienced, so I'm yeah. going to start cutting some dogs mm -hmm. and I'm going to clash you. Guys. Oh, wow, yeah, that we're ready, yeah. but that's just my vibe. Yeah, I give the youth energy. Mm -hmm. So he started it and we went and we supported him, and that's what we need to do more. We need to support each other more, you know, Absolutely. because Bax played a lot of sizzler while I'm asleep yeah. in my bed, you know what I mean? All these selectors and really these jackets, they've been <laughs> playing sizzler while I'm yeah. elsewhere. So, so right. we're going to help Bax on his um, anniversary because he had came here and played at the yeah. grassroots live. So that's where we sat and I'm very um, humble about it. I've yeah. learned a lot more. I can't yeah. stop learning. Learning is fun. Yeah. You know, I've seen all the drum of the sound. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, my sound is coming from here. Before I started using um, Nutrisys and all those yeah. stuff, before these all laptop and those stuff. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. used to use a CD. Yeah. And before the CD, the turn to yeah. find it. So yeah. I said, all right, so I'm supporting Bax. And that's a culture we were meant to. Mm -hmm. At that time, I bought a domain name called Sound System Culture because that's what we. Um, we lost a lot of those um, qualities within the sound system and youths of today knowing what sound system is and yeah. this is where um, 90 percent of jamaican artists started mm -hmm. out singing on sound system sound so, so yeah. that's just some, something to cherish sound system culture, just international 
a boxer anniversary. So we all get together and we do it well. Yeah. That's just it. Fantastic, fantastic. And what is it for? Um, it was um, Sniper International Boxer's 17th anniversary. We were giving um, trophies yeah. as token of appreciation and love and respect for all the other selectors and, and uh, some system owners. Do they do that regularly? Is that something they do? He recently that? started that. Oh, okay. So I think it will be my, my, maybe every three months or yeah. every year, I don't know. Nice, nice. And what's your sound called? The sound is called King Tafari. Tafari. So I said I need to make a sound for His Majesty and it's called King Tafari. Excellent, excellent. So you've cut enough dubs and things like that? Yeah, I've cut a lot of dubs. He came and cut a lot of dubs. Later, cut a lot of dubs. He selected the cut a lot of dubs. Mm -hmm. Shrimp, peepers, steppy, chas, and flavor wing. Flavor wing is the head selector for the sound. And what's your top three dubs that you had that you think if you was clashing with someone who was going to murder them, what three would you pull out? There's a lot of dubs, but I don't know the dub box like that. The okay. there, Do you have a favourite tune or something you think that? Yeah, I'll play that. Uh, naturally, honestly, the dub system with the sound is not who I feel. I don't know the dub box like that. The selector, yeah. that's their job. Yeah. That, that, that's how they enter the dinners clash and all yeah, those stuff yeah. they need best. But once they say yeah, to like clash the sound, yeah. I'm gonna pay the money are the only thing that's yeah. conscious, right? Just to get those dubs so they can Yeah, enter. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have to say, um, people, I just want to add this. One thing I've noticed in my time here and a few times that I've bumped into you playing out at these concerts in various places, I've noticed your humility, your humility and your humbleness. I mean, I think that's a great quality to have. Um, and people that are, they are successful. So one thing I hope that through this interview, people will see that and will support this cause that you're doing with the young exactly. people, I think is amazing, with the community, mm -hmm. the young youth, and even the guys that you're hoping to connect with in Africa, you mentioned earlier. <laughs> what? Well, it's good to be humble, you know, you see ahead of you more, and that's what we do when we're humble, we get more blessing, and Absolutely. we learn more from the people. Absolutely. So we're always teaching other people to work, and this is a foundation or to some sort of stage show, or get um, some together myself. South Africa, I mean, South Africa, I mean, the crazy about the music and that's the part. The beautiful people in South yeah. Africa, the whole entire Africa, actually. So we hope to get things going more there. Mm -hmm. So that is why we're setting it up here because kids from Africa, not just South, South Africa, but yeah. the entire continent, you know, randomly kids mm -hmm. from South Africa, beautiful people who just come to Jamaica looking for the Jamaican artists. Yes. So on, whatever time they come to a place like Judge Ming Chad, it's yep. well accommodated. But Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, so I think so, once you have that B&B, &B, that will accommodate them yes. perfectly, won't they? Nope. With the museum there and everything nicely in one place. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to now travel back a little bit now on your journey um, and just kind of try and, you know, share with the people how your journey started as an artist. I mean, when did you realise you had this God-given gift um, of being able to sing and perform and write even? Because you write those songs as well, don't you? Honestly, um, the realization came one evening and I was like, well, I'm always singing as a child mm -hmm. coming up yeah. and stuff like that. But to take it to a personal level where I would be the person who would be the master controller, directed with people, educated, yeah. and yeah. Yeah, African yeah. I was doing dishes for my mom one evening. Yeah. And I was listening to the radio and I was like, well, people need uh, those beautiful sounds, but I think they need to hear something more. And that's even when I started out writing some songs like No Wife God. Um, yeah, yeah. You need love. Yeah. This blast and stuff like that, you mm -hmm. know. Very young age, I'm old, I'm so old. I was seven and I had started wow. singing. Yeah. Wow. Um, the realization came one evening and I was like, well, I'm. Um, always singing as a child yeah. coming up and yeah. stuff like that but to take it to a personal level where i would be the person who would be the master country or not directed with people and yeah. people yeah. Like yeah. and yeah. i was doing dishes for my mom one evening yeah and i was listening to the radio and i was like well, people need uh, those beautiful sounds but i think they need to hear something more and that's even when i started out writing some songs like no wife that yeah um, yeah need love yeah. This blast and stuff like that, you mm -hmm. know. I'm very young, I'm so old. I was seven and I seven nine and started wow. singing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You yeah. Take your money and all those stuff, and sometimes I'll be at school like I'm fighting, yeah. defending the girls, fighting the girls. Oh, the girls. 
like you know, it's all good. Do you ever see those people now? Like, yeah. Oh, they those, must be like some cousins. Of them are they're my friend. best friend. Best friend of mine, you know. Yeah. yeah. You like you, mm -hmm. and you and I, like, yeah. Yeah. It's good to see them. You know, sometimes now because we live here, here, and we go to school. Sometimes a lot of us were really hungry. We have no food to go to school. We have yeah. no school uniforms and, yeah. and all this stuff. So we we do sure to do a lot of stuff. That's not really illegal, like really and stuff like yeah. selling roses, flowers, yeah, yeah. and juices, the biscuits, other people can sell and stuff like yeah. wiping car glass and all that stuff. Yeah. Just to make money, we don't want to be in a jail and we don't want to be. Yeah. Like, Problem with them, not just a system, but a parent. You know, so yeah. when you get yourself in trouble, that's a parent getting in trouble mm. also. So. Yeah. And then you get the beating as well. Oh. Did you have any of those? Because I certainly uh, did. I don't think no one had ever been um, lashed like from my parent. Oh, really? Was you? Was you thirsty? When you got kind of kids, they would just coffee or coffee. Yeah, yeah. Instead of this drunk. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay, so that was school, and then when you was in school, did you have a little bit of an idea of what you wanted to do? Because I know it was... Well, um, as I say, I started out um, at a young age singing, and my dad had mm -hmm. um, been operating the garage, so yeah. I learned the trade, the auto okay. body work from here, I learned mechanic naturally, yeah. just by um, orally, yeah. um, being instructed by great mechanics, yeah. who both got um, Savannah, yeah. my dad also, you know what I mean? So I learned that uh, I started with the body work now. Yeah. That's when I really get things going learning the trade there. Right. So right. my dad has always been a great person and he had always wanted me to go to a technical school. So okay. because I was still in primary, I've been yeah. to see what I took me to the Providence primary. Right. So I went to Gainesville High School in Swallow Field and my dad said, Well, send to uh, Dunham Technical because yeah. you, you have all these knowledge so yeah. all you know, proper yeah. you know, um, did the exam for school, passed the exam, went to um, Turning Part of the High School, I heard my education, mm -hmm. uh, did architect, and I mechanic, did um, mechanical engineering, right. did other science subjects wow. and stuff. So much, right? You know, that, don't, 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 <laughs> and you're still learning, you're still yeah. learning new don't things all the there. time. <laughs> don't know the motto is diligence for assistance for excellence. Absolutely. Well, I've been high school and ever since heard that motto, mm -hmm. I've been um, inspired and aspired prior to a greater level. Right, right. So that's a big change from being that feisty yes, child and I mean, always in trouble in school to becoming really focused on what you want to do, yeah, what you're passionate about. Exactly. I do believe our motors have a whole lot to do with you. Your school motors. I can't forget the agents with persistence for excellence. Yes. Since I've been working at that much fun. I think have done a lot. Well, you're doing a fantastic job. You really are. You are. So is there a particular teacher at school that you remember? And you're like that yes, teacher? Yes, I remember Mr. Westcott. A maths teacher, I'm like, I didn't have any maths book. My mom and dad couldn't afford it in that sense. They tried their best. So I started writing out formulas out of the books and alternative mm. formulas. So I would see the maths book. And um, during lunchtime, I would just like take up the book and start writing out the formulas in my book. Yeah. So I didn't have much time for doing really much um, exercising in the practical sense. Yeah. So I studied yeah. the formula. Okay. So I know the formula and I could the formula for the subject. So when I'm in the maths class, I would like, Correcting my teacher at times at one time. Wow. So I was like, I had to put my class. Oh, did you? <laughs> Last time I haven't been in any maths class. Oh. I don't play around. That just shows where there's a will, there is a way, right? We still made it work. So, okay, so from school, then um, obviously you did your studies. How, where did you start with your music in terms of like, was it on a sound system or did you play out in a community? Yes, my dad had always been like, um, a little sound system, you know, in our sound community, there are big sound system like Silver Heart, General, yeah. Um, yeah, Gemini, you know, I think this was Friday or Saturday. Okay. Friday or Saturday would be down by four dimensions and we would shop and from yes. down the road, from Judgment Child and Nation. The community would be there. So from there, we, 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 we managed to um, merge ourselves with sound systems and selects as, as youths from that time going up. You saw the carnival up by the okay. University of the West Indies yep. and when they're going around the ring and stuff, we could hear dancing, the girls singing, <laughs> and, uh, and picking up I'm bottles. I'm noticing the girls are always around, yeah, right? Yeah, you know, carnival, you know, already, and I said, you know, party, naturally. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. So we would be in that carnival kind of segment. We're not at the Gemini. Yeah. Um, General Silver Art parties looking bodies to pack them up in bags to sell them. My friends would yeah. be at the carnival. Yeah. So we started out like that, but that had this result system called it down. But that's okay. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, we'll get back to that. But yeah, yeah. that no, no, sound no, system right. and I started okay. practicing. Yeah. Yeah. I would practice loud. Yeah. When we were like singing and DJ, we right, right. over the microphone yeah, yeah. loud. And the whole entire community mm-hmm. would hear Black Steve. Right, was Black Steve. So, Black right, Steve. Right. And because um, I passed the exam to enter the Unum Park Technical High School, I became much familiar okay. and intimate for very beautiful community with beautiful people. Yeah. That is Nanville, okay. the community of Nanville. Mm-hmm. And I'm a very good friend of mine, Larry Bell Nevis. I met him at school trying to bad me up at school. That's how I met Larry Bell Nevis, you know? And like, yeah. And Larry said, you know, I had a sound system in my place, and Larry yeah. said, it's called Caveman. I'm saying, Caveman, I said, come, we're going to check it out. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was really a, a, a good kid, out, so well, was it's it? all right, we're going to go check the sound system. Yeah. So from there, and then I went to Larry, because we do a lot of schoolwork, so we'd like yeah. help each other with homework. Mm-hmm. And Larry took me to Caveman sound system, and right. those um, children in Nannyville supported the system, like really well, beautiful kids. Yeah. And we started out with um, caveman, so every evening after school I would go and get my homework mm-hmm. done after school in the schoolyard and yep. I would go to Larry's house get my homework done. And yep. after leaving Nannyville I would come to August I'd start to ride up until like 3 o'clock in the morning. Wow. Wow. Uh, Real dedication then. I had to pick up much of your time. I'm a caveman and from there mm-hmm. I started DJing over by caveman and the first time caveman I heard a sizzler from there caveman just laps and pisses down. Wow. He would just play any amount of rhythms and sizzler would be like on those rhythms. Yeah, yeah. So from there it's like my biggest enemy is an empty rhythm. Yeah. Because caveman would just say a lot of artists can't sing on these rhythms. Learn to right. run these rhythms, but I was well familiar with those rhythms from my dad song, Black right. Steel. So, Caveman was an extended arm of the sound system from mm-hmm. Black Steel to Caveman. Mm-hmm. So, Caveman now had a link with Mr. Harris, Omar Harris. Right. And Mr. Harris was a two big group, you know. So, Mr. Omar Harris now, wow, well, booking Caveman. Mm-hmm. Caveman had somewhere an office that people got an office at the home yeah. from Mr. Harris and run by Blue Mountain Studio. Right. But that which was really beautiful at Blue Mountain Studio. Mm-hmm. And I managed to merge and perfect my career and my singing and DJing around mm-hmm. that area. Yeah. Q Road down mm-hmm. that side. And you would have the rehearsal room at Blue Mountain Studio. So you'd have eight or nine bands, mm-hmm. um Pop Five, you'd have third work for me in Cat Core right. and when you have Mikey Fletcher Casty and and, and both the Chico, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, Mr. Fraser himself. Yeah. Um I would be just helping to tune up the system. Right. So I said give me the microphone and that's the good stuff the bass Mikey um drum, Mikey Fletcher start playing um bass and Chris and everyone yeah. works. So I got the blessing of the music from a sound right. system yeah. with yeah. fans yeah. on the same property at Two B Group Road. So I've done yeah. a lot of experiences mm-hmm. right there. This is where it took me. Yeah. Was she not nervous that the first time you picked up the mic? No, no, I was never nervous at What, even in front of people when you got a big no, audience? No, no, no. no. no I was never wow. nervous at all. Okay. All right. So, um, so after that, your journey has just spread out globally. What would you say is memorable, most memorable for you in your journey so far? There's a whole lot of stuff that's really um, in the thought. But one of my most memorable time was when Cayman was playing somewhere in two miles. And there was no light, no ball, nothing. Because in, that, in those times, it was like a really difficult sound system. Yeah. We slept on boxes, we slept in trucks and all those stuff. And I would walk from two miles right back to Nanneville. I'd walk from Nanneville right back to two miles in wow. the dark, in the night. How long did that with take bulbs and light. Oh, good vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in the dark walk, as well. Right from, 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 it was two miles to Nanny. Yeah. That was a while, four hours. Oh my gosh. Hours, but I got to walk to Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was one of my most memorable time in years. Yeah. Up to do that. And the whole public that were waiting on the light yeah. to do his stuff. That yeah. was one of them. Um, and so you've collaborated with a lot of people. Um, is there anyone in, that you think of that you would like to collaborate with that you haven't? Um, they may have passed on or they may still be living. Is there anyone, any couple of people that you put on love to do with you on that person? And even other person that would like to do collaborations between black people. I've always wanted to do a song with Dennis Brown. Dennis Brown, yeah. 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 And I've always wanted to do a song with like Paris Hammer. Okay. Like Paris Hammer, you know, and Steve Hills, which also has a lot of people like And the opportunity I've presented is uh, a lot of times, but I'm just a labor person. I was a bit taken aback when I see how I treated um, artists yeah. trying to get a break in the music. 
So yeah. I, I think I had had one put out. I think I wouldn't have had any nose bridge. You know? yeah. the doors slamming in my face just quite often like that. But you gotta get that to the music. So yeah. there's a lot. Yeah. Um, and then you write your own music. What inspires you to write your music? And where do you write it? Do you come to a place like this? I, I, I write music just about anywhere. Right? Just about anywhere. So it just comes to your mind it's and like. like a snap like that. But what inspires me was like I'm seeing the 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 the, 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 the plural stage that the people are really living in, in the community. Yeah. And I check the history and as a child seeing the Holocaust and seeing yeah. lynching, clinching and yeah. all the persecuted um, black people, not just black people, all people. Mm -hmm. um, I was like pushed to do more and um, as I've said before, I was taught to learn to read the English language by the Roman, Mr. Roman Henry, who was the secretary of Bedford, yeah. and Mr. Roman Henry first taught me about His Majesty, you know, I used to last year. So I know the Bedwardites, they were still as high heights. Right, yeah. right. So that's just about it. Yeah. And what other genres of music do you listen to? Well, I listen, I like country music, I like an acoustic, I listen to hip hop, I listen to punk, I listen to, you know, reggaeton, the crossover, the yeah. RB, I like those kids. Yeah. The other natural general music by Ska, Mento, Renegade, and Naya Bindi, which is a church yeah. called Trony Music. Yeah. So there were some young people, up and coming artists, um, thinking to come into the music industry. What would you advise them? What kind of three things would you say to them that they really need to focus on or be aware of? I would say oh, so you seek Almighty and always add it to uh, Rastafari, get to know your culture, know your roots, and then um, you'll aspire to do much better. you reach for greatness as one. And secondly, I would say think yourself as a um, better person to, to lead by example and follow other example and be a humble person and remember now what you um, can see you can perceive you just need to just be humble and just work at it keep working at it and never give up because the life is a cycle once you start with something yeah. you go over it again over and over you get it it's just like music playing the song once on the radio station mm -hmm. until it's in rotation to the whole entire world mm -hmm. sing this song and thirdly i would say keep reading and keep recording mm -hmm. and keep being, being an inspiration to other persons you can't just be living for yourself you can't be narcissistic you just got to be a person that reaches out to other persons and help them because you have a lot of persons out there they're really downhearted down to at least they want to assist you know what i mean and that's just about it so be an example and always be a teacher I remember learning is fun always be in the position to be someone who, who Willing to learn, yeah. willing to listen, willing to learn. Then we can teach the world. Absolutely, that's so perfectly said, you see. Um, so, if you was the most powerful person in the music industry, <laughs> what three changes would you make? Because I know you've just talked about doors being closed in your face, and I guess that's part of the journey as well for everyone, isn't it? First change. What would you? I would, I would like for them to get through the door, the system of music in publishing, royalties, masters, yeah. Yeah, because you're putting out something out there, it's your natural sweat and blood. Right. You know, so you need to get your stuff together, so you need to get your wealth, okay. get all those stuff belonging to you, but it was given to you naturally by the Almighty and through yes. the hands of the people as fans buying yeah. the music. Okay. So you need to know the system of music, you know, you know, get your song properly registered, get your publishing out and your royalties and get your splits out there and be kind, be honest and sharing. Yeah. You know, what you do, that's where you don't go out trying to steal someone else's yeah. stuff. That's not And Secondly, so I would like for you to, when you get your money, you build other yeah. stuff to give back to the community. You buy lands and you put up buildings, you know, mm -hmm. you put up kitchens, schools, yeah. Little stuff, creatures for kids, you know what I mean? You put yeah. Airbnb, you could open a business, be business minded, you take your money and invest it, and then you, you have better things coming into you. And um, thirdly, it's for you to um, help to set your own stage. I mean, you don't go and wait that person to promote you. You're your biggest and best, you're your own walking billboard. So yes. I think you should do more for yourself by putting all the parties for yourself, not just allow uh, the manager to be doing stuff. Yeah. Um, 
are part of promoters out there. Mm -hmm. You need to do stuff for you. You need to set up little interviews for yourself. You need to do your videos. Yeah. You need to do your own little shows, your own little gig. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Little acoustic setting, just about anything that you really like. You need to just do your own stuff. Yeah. Some very profound words there, definitely. Um, okay, so you've done so much music. You've released over 70, I think over 70 albums. Um, out of the music you've done, what song really sticks with you and you're most proud of? And I'm sure you're proud of all your music and your achievements. Is there any particular song you've done you've got a bit of a soft spot for? Yeah. Well, Thank You Mama is really it's a very beautiful song. Yes. That song, Black Woman and Child, is his journey. A song that he's just coming with, like, holding for do you want to talk a little bit about that? No, I've been here in all days of my life She brought to the queer and be all in my sight Some will shame me, others do as they like Some is just a flesh to want to tear with all them front and knife Some don't hear the rot is like a wheeze Waiting to see you fall Yes, we're holding a firm Keep holding firm Beautiful, beautiful So, you know, you've done so many songs How do you remember the lyrics? Have you ever performed and had a block? That you've got just forgotten because it, it comes with the, with the whole thought of liberating the people the thought of slavery is still oh, yeah. present and dominant in a sense that the people is not seen in that sense but mm -hmm. it's still present among us so i wrote a lot of songs and the topic is yeah. of the song yeah. that's what causes me to remember the song so you've never made a, like a little mistake of anything? Oh, I've made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> you just cover, cover it up with a little ring-a-ding. That's just like a freestyle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, because sometimes I'm not going to always remember the word, but that's a damn thing of intelligence yeah. from the topic on itself. Yeah. I can always write a line or move back and get it right. Yeah. Okay, so what can the fans out there and the people out there expect from Sizzler in the near future coming up? More music. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping to do a lot more constructions. Um, I've been studying the architect. Um, I went and get a few more certificates for the architect and we'll be in enjoying um, computers. So I'm hoping to put a lot more buildings out there. I'm presently starting a project, Sisla Farmers Group in St. Anne's, with those persons in Grand Spend Sheep, and the whole crew trying to get land and the farming because St. Thomas is booming in farming now. And certain like seasoning onion and all those stuff, they're getting the St. Thomas people big up on the search of mm -hmm. Just about all the farmers, essentially, we're doing a lot of farming. People all over the island, they've done a lot of farming in Jamaica. Yeah. But that's what I want to do. I want to get into farming. Oh, I want to yeah. get into like making okay, sure service stuff. cars. Yeah. Um, I want to get into um, branded clothing. Yeah, yeah. And you know, all those stuff. I want to get into the sense of, I want to be like ergonomics where I can make phones, almost yeah. like phones, tablets, mm -hmm. all those stuff. I think I need a company to do those stuff because yeah. those are domestic needs for the nation. Absolutely. I so there's a lot Absolutely. of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So you're dreaming big, you've got big visions, and when you yes. do have big visions, you will succeed, yes, I'm sure. Um, okay, so lastly, um, what is your message for myself and Lily Cooley and John Sinclair for the work <laughs> for the works that we're doing? Well, I would say my message to you is that continue doing what you're doing because um, a lot of time the media tends to distort the fact yeah. and hold the truth back from us. So when you've got great persons like you doing this, it's just lovely where the people can see and feel the natural vibration coming from an artist. So I would encourage you to do more and reach out more to the people. And when you see a talent, you just record that talent and put it to the world so the people in the world can see that something is coming. It's not only Sisla. Sisla is not the only artist in Jamaica. You have a lot of beautiful artists, both male and females, you know. So as you go by, you see a lot of talents. You can just, you know, be honest, teach them and promote them because mm. you're not going to see talent of just singing. They have a lot mm. more creation of the you know, yeah. person who is carved, the little bit carving, but doing uh, sewing, you know, person doing art, you know, yep. drawing. Yep. Yeah. That person's even with the machine, the stunt, yep. the stunt creative. bikes, they're very creative, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And so that's just about, it. once you see the talent, you can help that person to get to the world. Or one day that person can come back and be a good, um, a good play to you. I don't want this interview to end, you know. I'm just getting such positive vibrations and really uplifting them. So I just want to end by saying thank you so much, Sisa. I appreciate your time. May the Almighty, our Creator, continue to bless you in everything that you do, in your projects, in your works. May everything your hands touch prosper. Everything your mind, vision, 
focus is on may it blossom and bloom. May exactly. you continue to bless the community, the people, and may our Heavenly Father continue to bless us. And lastly, people, these great works that are happening here with the massive project for the community and the young people, there are ways for you to support. So, how would yeah, they do this? This is a youth foundation that are and shut down and establish a account for the such a court. So, there's a lot of ways that donate and support. And we just do the email to the Sister Youth Foundation one. Yeah, Can I just add to that? There's many people out there that do collect money and you just never really know where that goes. This is visible, it's tangible. We can see where your money will go in terms of building, structuring, supporting the community, as I said, and the young youth. So please donate. Wow. And he'll be coming soon. Watch his face, yeah? Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.